to this new episode of Continuum Gaming, this time around in English, as you may already have noticed, and today we are going to have a look at three different games again, which will be Super Tank Fighting, Super Invasion Galaxy Shooter, and Tower of Elements. My name is Gerald, and as always, I've got a couple of different things with me, which are, for instance, this Arc Mouse, which is just a Bluetooth-enabled device, so we can connect it to the smartphone, for instance. Um, there will be the Follow Keyboard again, which is this keyboard here, which is just very portable, very small, and uh, this is why I'm using this. It's a Bluetooth device, too. And we have the Xbox One S wireless controller for one of the games, um, which can be used with that, and uh, I will show you what's uh, going on there and uh, where to use it. It's yeah, semi-necessary, I would say. Um, you can really use the uh, 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 keyboard, for instance, too, for that game, but we will see what's going on there and uh, why I prefer sometimes to use this one. And um, yeah. After that, of course, we are going to go with the Lumina 50 XL again, which is a um, Windows 10 mobile smartphone, which has a Mosu cover on the back and is equipped with an USB-C connector at the bottom, which can be connected to this kind of USB-C cable, which is in itself connected to the Microsoft uh, Microsoft uh, dock here, so the Microsoft Display connector, and uh, this one is again connected by HDMI to the TV and like that we can use more or less this desktop-like experience on uh, created by our smartphone on the big screen and that is more or less what we want to do today. Um, there are a couple of different uh, things you can do with that and one of them is of course gaming and for that we are going to use this setup. If you want to know more about all of this Please have a look at the corner up there, there are a couple of different other videos where I'm going to talk about that in detail. And um, yeah, then let's start with the first game, that's why you are all here are probably. And so have a look at Super Tank Fighting. Super Tank Fighting is a pretty nice game which is heavily advertisement uh, based, whatever. We will have a look at that and uh, the good thing is most of that stuff you can click away and get rid of. Um, some isn't, but we will see what's going on there. So, Super Tank Fighting, there it is. I'm going to click on it now and let's see what's happening there. Um, the game itself is more or less a shooter game, so you're going to uh, watch a tank moving around from the top and there are a couple of other tanks which are going to fight against you. Um, it's not exactly like um, there's a normal gaming you know about there, where, where tanks are fighting against other players or something. It's all against bots. So the cool thing about it is that the bots are really, really different. So there are really different kinds of tanks and there are different kinds of uh, occasions you're going to, to engage them and stuff like that. So um, let's have a look at that. I'm going to show you how to get rid of these banners first. So um, be very, very careful here. Don't press on the red part, but only press in the middle. If you are doing that, they're going to go away. If you're not going to press the X in itself, um, you might, for instance, um, just activate the ad. So just do it like that. And I'm going to do that here too. Oh, come on. So, as you can see, I picked that one up there too. Um, give me one second, because there is something happening over there. We'll be right back. Yeah, and so you are going to have to click on the X here to get it away. And as you can see, it's really, really important to hit the exact right spot, which is more or less in the middle, in some situations at least. And so just click on them. And now you are able to play the game. Of course you can play it uh, with the banner on top of it, but I just don't like that. So, um, last one, get rid of that too. And after that, we can now click on play. And the game itself, as mentioned before, is against other bots and they are going to fight with tanks, with different kinds of tanks. And as mentioned before, it's heavily ad-based, so you are going to watch one of the panels or whatever um, advertisements at the start, and after that, you're going to be able to, to watch the game itself. 
Um, in general, it's a very short little uh, kind of, of advertisement, so it's not hard to overcome or something. And um, yeah, after that, let's load the game in. And now we are able to play it. Um, I'm going to uh, click on play now and show you what's going on there. Um, important, we are going to use the portable keyboard in this case to play the game. And um, yeah, as mentioned before, there are a couple of different options here. For instance, we have the option to get rid of this very, very rapid music, whatever. And we could get rid of sounds too, but we are going to play it with both of those. But I will just turn down the volume a little bit. So on the on the formal keyboard, for instance, there are a couple of different action keys, and I can use them to navigate on the smartphone. And in this case, for instance, uh, lower or increase the volume. And yeah, after that, I'm just going to press on play. And what's going to happen here now is you're going to have to select a couple of different things. You can do that at least. Um, if you have enough money, as you can see here is a money counter, um, you can for instance uh, buy miniguns, shotguns and other kinds of weapons here to be more effective more or less in the end. And um, there is another option here with performance. So if, for instance you can increase your visibility, so the range of your own visibility or with a bit of any range and a turret speed and stuff like that so that you are of course getting some kind of an advantage um, based on whatever you are buying here. So um, other than that there is a difficulty level which is going to be asked at the start and um, in the end you can use between easy, medium and hard. I'm going to use easy in this case because I'm just talking and I just want to tell you what's going on. Um, I would suggest you to go with normal or something because um, that's just the best way to play games in general, at least if you are starting with them. Yeah, and um, after that, if you have more or less got what you wanted here, go to play. Um, there are a couple of different levels, as you can see, so um, it's not only about uh, just going one, uh, one around and that's all, but uh, there are a couple of different levels which are going to have different kind of obstacles and stuff like that. As you can see, sometimes there are going to be ads in there, um, in the end it's bearable, it's not that hard to do or not that hard to get rid of, so um, you can play uh, with it, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of ads which are going to be uh, placed at least above something, so in this case if you are in the middle of a game it might happen that there is sometimes one of those and that's a little bit annoying, but let's see what's, uh, what's going to happen here. As you can see, this is your, your tank, your fighter from above, and as you can see, we are able to move around here. That is done more or less by your keyboard, can be done by WASD for instance, and, and uh, I think it's also possible by the uh, arrows here. Yeah, so just use one of them. As you can see, you have some kind of a vision range. So, um, the moment you are moving in one of the directions, the vision range, range will change and um, the most important thing about that is that that is true for your enemies too. So, the enemies don't see you till you are in their vision range or better to say if you are fighting them, so firing at them or something, they are going to come after you too, which is probably the normal thing to do if you ask me. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do here now as you can see, you can move around with the keyboard in this case. The interesting part is that you will have to use your mouse in this case to fire at stuff. And um, it's not like the turret or something is moving in the direction you want it to move, but it's an auto turret more or less. So you can tell him when to shoot, but not really on what he should shoot. And as you can see, here are a couple of different things. For instance, in this case, we are more or less closed off, as you can see here. And the closed off stuff is more or less uh, breakable, so we can fire on that and get rid of that. And uh, those are explodable bar uh, barrels, more or less, so you can fire on them and they're going to uh, be exploding and hitting everything around them. Give me one more second, please. Yeah, and there I am back. Sorry, um, I got my vaccination appointment because of that I had to go there because it's pretty hard to get one in, in Germany at the moment. 
and yeah, I just got it. Perfect. Okay, so let's have a look at what's going on here again. So uh, as mentioned before, we have this uh, explodable barrels, more or less, which are going to do some kind of uh, of uh, explosion radius around them, more or less, and killing everything that is around them, or at least damaging them. It's, it depends on the on the enemy. And as you can see, we can move around now with our tank here and uh, yeah, the, the camera view is more or less following us in this case and I'm just going around here. To fire you have to use your mouse and uh, then you can just do this and as you can see there is some kind of an explosion in general happening and um, yeah, there's still this kind of, um, it's, it's called fog of war or something in, in some other games at least and uh, the visibility range in the end and be careful because there is one of the enemies now and we can fight him at least there should be, yeah there he is he is pretty much powerful more powerful than you are in general but what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to not get in the way of his full power army there so not getting every shot more or less and of course we have to be very, very careful to not stand next to a barrel or something if they are going to fight that at that moment. So next off we are trying to find the next, uh, the next enemy more or less. And of course you can for instance kill these kinds of um, stuff too. Because in some situations you get for instance like this one um, health and there might be some kind of a shield and stuff like that happening here. So it depends, but that should help a lot. And uh, yeah, the biggest flaw of the game, or the hardest thing to do in the game, is of course to shoot in the right direction, if you ask me. Oh, there was a turret in there. Didn't, I didn't see that coming, but wasn't that powerful, so we were more or less lucky in this case. But let's see what we can do here. I know that if we are fighting these parts here, there are going to be some kind of guys coming out there too. And the problem is a lot of them are all in this kind of uh, part there. So we really have to touch them and try to get out of their range for instance. As you can see they have a range as well as you do. So be careful about that. Don't get too close to that kind of exploding barrel and just try to move faster than, than them and try to get out of there. As you can see there is this kind of, of I don't know, gold or something, I'm not sure, um, that is going to get into your profit money here. So um, if you're killing one of the enemies, you are getting the money for killing him, of course. And yeah, okay, worked too. And yeah, there are a couple of different things you can destroy. Some help you with money, others just are the, the objective more or less. So in this case this was the objective to kill this kind of, of um, whatever it was, computer or something. And yeah, now you are able to play the next, uh, next part here after watching an, an uh, advertisement in this case. But as you can see, it's a pretty nice game if you like this kind of tank uh, games and stuff like that. But there are a lot of different advertisements you are going to have to go through. Um, it's bearable. As you can see, we could play it more or less in a pretty nice way and everything worked out pretty nicely. But um, yeah, you just have to be, uh, be um, aware that it's going to happen. The good thing about it is the advertisements are, in general at least, I, I can't uh, tell it for everything of course, but in general they are placed in a situation where they are not very disturbing or, or just um, interrupting your game or something, but they are after each level and stuff like that. So it's a pretty nice thing to do like that and you can really play this yeah, more or less without any kind of bigger interruptions. Yeah. Um, other than that, I don't think I have to tell you much more about this game, so let's go to the next one. So first off, we are going to get rid of that. Yeah, and now I got rid of my paper, so give me one second, please. 
Yeah, and then let's have a look at the Super Invasion Galaxy Shooter game, which is the second one of uh, this episode, of course. And um, in this case, this is a Galaxy Shooter, might suggest it already, uh, a space shooter game. Um, it's a pretty nice one, if you ask me. Um, it has different kind of levels and stuff like that, and it's pretty nicely done. Let's go to all apps and go to... I think I already have it here, yeah, there. Super Invasion Galaxy Shooter, as you can see, we are going to play that one. And um, yeah, it's more or less a, a shooter game where you are going to uh, fight against different enemies and stuff like that. Um, it's more or less meant or defined as being more or less you against everybody else. So, um, as you can see, we have different kind of options here with the mouse um, being movable and... Yeah, you can go to Play, Store, Options and Purchase. Um, I'm going to show you the options, they are pretty easy to understand, of course, because there's only music in here and sound. If I increase the sound a little bit, you can hear that there is some kind of music playing in the background. Um, this game is available in English and I think in Russian or something, so um, of course you should select English at the start if you are not understanding Russian, of course. And um, yeah, other than that, there's not much to do here, so let's go to play in this case. And let's have a look at what's going on here. So um, in the end, you can already see a little bit of the graphics here. And um, yeah, you can move your, your um, fighter around by... And this is a little bit uh, unfortunate, I'm going to show you that. Um, you can use, uh, use WASD theoretically, but it's not going to help you, because only a couple of those uh, those buttons will work really. Um, most importantly, S can be used for shooting, that's very, very uh, important to know, and af after that just use your, your um, arrow keys to control the ship movement. That's more or less what you have to bear in mind in this game, because you can't use, for instance, where, uh, WASD and stuff with a space bar or something to fire, it's not going to happen only S is going to shoot here. So I'm going to turn around in this case and just show you what's going on here because otherwise I'm not able to play this game in a really really good manner. So let's see next part here. So after that we are going to close the pause button here and go in there again because I moved my part there. Come on. There we go. And now, as you can see, we can move our um, ship here. Be very careful because there are a couple of different enemies here. You can already see them. Um, for instance, there is this mine enemy. This mine is a seeking mine, so if, if it's going to be close to you, it's going to kill you. Then there are this kind of... Um, more or less this kind of asteroid or whatever you want to call them and there are going to be enemy spaceships some are firing at you, some are not um, some can take a lot of hits, some can't it really depends on the size of the enemy spaceship and stuff like that you will sooner or later see what's going on there and of course what you want to do is if you are killing something you're going to get this kind of coin there and you want to um, more or less collect that. Um, second thing that is important for you, you can fire at enemy fire. So if they are firing with this kind of laser on you, you are able to, if you really aim right, hit that kind of laser too and not going to be get hit by that. As you can see, you can take more than one hit, which is a good thing in this game, otherwise it's not playable if you ask me. And um, yeah, what you can see here in addition to that is that firing is pretty much uh, very hard thing to do or there are really very, very slow paced firing rates here. So um, in the end, at least for you, the enemy could be like that, but for you it's pretty, pretty damn slow. Um, and the, hard thing to do here is just to get not fired at too much but get a couple of different hits here in too. 
and I don't fly against other enemies. I couldn't, I couldn't move around there because there is some kind of a gap from the top and the bottom where you can't move around. Um, but in the end, this is your score now, and now you can, for instance, go to the next level or do, uh, do something. Um, or better to say, not to the next level, sorry. The levels are here, levels are level 5 at the moment, so it's going to be more rapid firing, and there are going to be more of the enemies and stuff like that, and harder enemies to kill. And um, in the end, as you can see, we got to level 5 in this case and got this score, and of course you are trying to increase your score all over again and again and again and do it better and better all the time. After that, um, you see we have 323 coins collected now. We can go to the store in this case. And um, there's the game store, upgrade ship and so on. We are going to go to the ship store in this case. And now you can see, for instance, there are a couple of different, uh, different ships available. We can't buy them at the moment, but if you are playing a little, you might be able to do that. And they have different parameters, as you can see. There are, for instance, uh, the parameter of, um, of the health, of course. Um, how much one damage shot of you will, uh, will help you. How much um, health, more or less, in the, in the shield you are going to have. Um, and so on and so forth. So a couple of different other things, for instance, there is this um, health bonus. So what is going to happen to your ship if you are going to collect one of those and so on and so forth. It's a pretty neat little thing to do here and for instance if you want to you can change the color too but that is pretty damn expensive. So if you are going to level 2 for instance you can see the color is going to be changed and there are going to be different kind of options here. But um, this is something... yeah, I don't have 5 million bucks to, to spend on that or even 25 million or something. So let's go out here and let's see what's going on in the upgrades part. So you can, for instance, upgrade your ship too. So for at least less money, you can, for instance, go and buy, let's say, the speed of the ship or something, or how much a rocket will will be uh, losing you and stuff like that. And yeah, it's a nice little thing to do, especially the fire rate should be updated. So I'm going to buy that in this case, because otherwise we are going really down here. I don't like it like uh, that. So let's try it again with a little bit of a higher um, yeah, firing speed in the end. It's not going to make a super big difference, but a little bit of, yeah, it's a little bit faster than before. I think you really have to have this kind of fire way to play this game, otherwise it's not going to be much fun. But yeah, it's yeah pretty fast that you can buy that and after the third update or something in the fire range department it's really going to be yeah much more fun as you can see already yes yeah, so just try to get all the enemies now down the good thing of course if you're playing this uh, there was a shield power up as you can see in the lower left uh, in the upper left corner sorry um you're going to find the Informations about that, so how much uh, money you have, of course, how much shield you still have left, how much of the health you still have left, and stuff like that. There was a bigger asteroid, as you can see, and of course, there are going to be different enemies sooner or later, too. We're in level 4 already now, and still at least a little bit living. We will see if we can uh, can do something here. So the good thing is, of course, the enemies are at least at this kind of stage firing in a straight line at you, um, with the exception of the mine that's pretty good to dodge, or pretty easy to dodge at least. And there you can see different kind of enemies which are going to have different kind of abilities too. So, for instance, um, different health levels uh, might come in there, and of course, moving speed is going to be up and down and stuff like that. So, just have a look at the game if you like this kind of game, because I think I already showed you what I can show you in this case. But I have to say, I like it somehow. It's it's a nice little, very very um, nice 
retro fighter game. So if you're into retro fighter games, this might be exactly what you are searching for. Interesting part about it is that you are fighting against guys who have more or less the same ship as you have. Ooh, 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 ooh. Now I'm close to that. Ooh. <laughs> that was pretty, pretty close. A little bit too close for my taste. Let's see if we can... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Don't get me, no. No. Don't want to. Wow. I think I'm close to that. Ooh. Okay, let's scan that. Maybe we are still living a little bit longer. I think I never played this as long as this till now. Yeah, we are rocking it at the moment. Not, I don't know how long we are going to rock it. As you can see, um, the game is more or less giving you, for instance, new health and stuff if you need it. So the power-ups are pretty fair if you ask me, but that was it. And we already got 3,043 uh, 3, points in this game, in, in this case, and could go to the shop again and buy different other updates and do stuff like that. I really like this game. Try it out if you like uh, this kind of retro fighter games too. It's a nice one. And so I think we can leave this now and go to the next one. And the next one we are going to have a look at is Tower of Elements. Tower of Elements is more or less a jump and run game with, yeah, let's say it's not really jump and run. So let's see what's going on there. Um, the interesting part is it can be played with Xbox One as well as controller in general at least. And um, here you can see we're going to start it. Um, the backstory is more or less you are um, uh, appetite of um, wizard and uh, you're trying to go up in the hierarchy to be a real wizard more or less and for that you have to go up the tower of elements that's more or less the premise and um, I'm going to click on options now just to show you what's going on it's really really simple you can more or less not switch the language so I'm not sure why this is here at all but what you can do is you can, for instance, get rid of the music if you don't like it and not. And that's more or less all you can do here. I'm going to turn around again uh, just to be able to play this game in a better fashion here. And um, in the end you're going to use the Xbox One Riders controller, um, but only the, the um, stick more or less. And a little bit of A, the button A can be pressed for some kind of interactions, but most uh, in most times you're not going to be able to use it. So I will show you why. It's not really because the game doesn't support it or something, but the game in itself doesn't want you to use it. So let's see what's going on there. I'm going to turn around. And as you can see in the menus and stuff like that, you should navigate with the uh, with uh, uh, mouse in this case. And you can of course use the Xbox One wireless controller, but you're not going to see anything, so just use a mouse in the menu. And here we go. In the arcane land of Red Doria, mages learn to be too fast to read it. Sorcerers appreciate travel to the Tower of Elements to go up. And this is more or less what's going on here. I don't know why they did it that fast, because I think nobody can read that. But whatever, it's just a small little kind of, of introduction. So in the end, um, it's all about this, uh, this little guy there, that is you. And you can turn and move around using, for instance, the Xbox One's Redis controller or your keyboard for, in this case. And um, yeah, in the end, if you are coming to this kind of yeah, ob obelisk or whatever that is called, um, you can stand next to it and they will give you some kind of information what can be done. Because this is of course, a, let's say, a jump and run puzzle game. So in the end, there is no jump button in this game, which is yeah, interesting, didn't, didn't know that before, it's very uncommon. Um, it's going to jump around by itself. As you can see, there are some kind of creatures flying around, but they are not going to attack us in this level, so I'm just running around. In this case, there's nothing to, to be mentioned some, uh, somehow, or this is broken, I'm not sure, it doesn't matter. We just have to go to this door here, and after that, you're getting some kind of a star uh, grading, which is telling you, hey, you, was, you were fast enough or something. Okay, and after that, um, 
yeah, here was one of the, par the parts where you can use the A button to more or less do stuff. Um, as you can see, this is uh, the next level you're going to fight in. And there are going to be some kind of creatures in there, and this is important. I think they are going to tell us that now. And you can't, at least at the start, um, somehow damage the, uh, the creatures there. So just avoid them. It's not going to, uh, to happen that you are going to do something with them. So just avoid them. And um, yeah, jumping is more or less done by just running to one of the blocks, which is not too high, or which should not be too high. So just one height more or less of your, your player figure. And if that is the case, then you can just over jump that and that's, uh, that's what's going on here. Here is some kind of, of helper for you to see the whole level. So if you want to do that, I don't know which button should trigger that on your, on your um, part here. It's not going to help you. Um, this button is going to reset you. So if you are pressing that, we're going to go back to the start and you can restart. Sometimes it's, it's important to do that, sometimes it's not. Um, but let's press on that button, we have to use the mouse for that. And as you can see, we can now see the whole level, but it's not really helping us very, very much. It's just telling us that the enemy creature there is moving around and, and uh, we have to avoid it. So in this case, we really don't have to do anything. So tap here is again the A button. If you do that, you can see that some kind of interaction is going to happen there. And again, just run against the different blocks here to get everything going and jumping up, for instance. And of course, you will have to go to the next level. So search for some kind of a door to jump through it. And after that, you can just press A again to activate the menu and go to the next one. Yeah, as mentioned before, those kind of, of enemies, let's say it like that, are not going to be beatable by you, so just avoid them. That's more or less what they're telling us here. In this case, of course, we have to avoid that part there and um, have to go up to that part. And now I'm just going to wait a little and go through. Um, the, the starting levels are pretty, pretty easy, but it's going to be harder and harder because you can already see we are going to the the wind levels now. So wind levels are more or less one of your your powers. So um, in the end, you can in this case use those. It's this level in this case. We have to use uh, the mouse again for that to select that. I'm going to click on those, and now you can see there are a couple of different wind levels, and uh, yeah. You can already see there are a couple of different levels all around here. So if here are f uh, 10 in those, and there are a couple of them more because there are four powers or something, four or five, I'm not sure, um, it's more or less giving you a lot of different levels you can play here. So let's go in and go to the next level. In this case, um, you can all can use the A button again to activate the power in this case. And this is now more or less uh, puzzle stuff. So um, to go on here, there is this wind power in this case. And the wind power is, can be used, for instance, to move those kind of um, ice blocks, as you can see over there. So let's go over here. And as you can see, we can't cross this now because it's too high. But if we, for instance, move the ice blocks, just fire in the right direction, go next to them, do that and then wind is going to move them, we can overcome this obstacle and go over there. Um, just to let you know, in the first level, for some kind of reason, there are two ice blocks behind each other. Um, in other levels, you can't move two ice blocks in, uh, behind each other. I'm not sure why this is, but they just got that wrong or something. So if you, for instance, try to solve this puzzle by just clicking two times on the, on the moving part there, it's not going to happen. So be very careful about that. Um, how to move uh, to solve this level now? Just jump over the next, one, the first one. Go here, and now you will have to just put everything in there so, or in the in the holes, so you can over jump them. Um, interesting part about the wind uh, wind uh, power is the blocks are going to move all the way. So it's not going to be stopped or something after a while. It's really all the way through till there's an obstacle which is going to hinder them to go there. And now we can just overjump this again and go to the next level. As you can see, it's 
pretty easy at the start, but it's going to be harder and harder all the time. So in this case we can't overjump, because uh, we're not going to go to the next part there. So in this case, just pressing A here should be the right thing to do. Going here, overcome that, going here. And now we can go back and fire those into the different slides there. And as mentioned before, they're going to go all the way. It doesn't matter which one you're going to press here because after that, they are going to be everywhere. Let's wait for that guy, jump up, and we have the next level. And so the levels are going to increase and are, are going to be yeah, difficult and more difficult all over again. And there are a couple of different other things to overcome here. Um, with the different powers, of course, as mentioned before, there's wind, there's fire and stuff like that. So just try it out. I think it's a really nice game in this case. Um, especially if you're into this kind of, of um, yeah, let's say puzzle jump and run or something, I'm not sure. And um, yeah, if you like this kind of game, try it out. I think it's worth it and you can really have a great time with it. Okay, and this is more or less the episode, I would say. So, um, I s hope you had fun. Please give it a thumbs up if you didn't uh, do that uh, now. And of course, uh, if you have any kind of questions, put them down below in the uh, commentary section. And there's a subscription button too. Please do it. Interactions with the, with the channel are very important for me, so that I get at least a couple of different uh, views here. And other than that, thank you for watching, thank you for listening, see you in the next episode, which will be online, yeah, probably next weekend, and so, have a great time, stay healthy, bye-bye, and see you!